It's time to get your checking account to zero with free checking from PenFed. That's zero ATM fees, zero balance requirements, and zero time spent waiting for your paycheck to direct deposit because you can receive it up to two days early. Open your account with just $25 and see how big zero can be. Apply online today at PenFed.org slash free checking. Early direct deposit eligibility may vary between pay periods and timing of payers' funding. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. And we're back. How we doing, Anna? Well, Todd, things are heating up. Ooh, yes, Nelson with the jalapeno poppers. Incredible. Ramirez comes in hot with a cheeseburger, patty, lettuce, tomatoes. Beautiful formation. Is he? <gasps> He's going for it. Ramirez grabs the Duke's mayo. <laughs> Look at it go. The twang. Anna, this is the best tailgate I've ever commentated on. Tailgate with twang. Get the official mayo of the tailgate. Duke's mayo today. Charlie. Sure. It's the Basil Jelly Show from coast to coast. And uh, now we'd like to... Hey, look, will you fix that technical equipment in there, please? Hello, folks. This is a big noise from Winnetka. Wait a minute, Ed, you left one foot in the air there. Oh, <laughs> sure. Well, it was awfully yeah. nice of you to brush it off anyway. Yeah. Good afternoon and welcome, friends, to our program called... Uh, I believe our announcer mentioned something else at the opening of the show. Say? I think he called this the Basil Jelly Program. The Basil Jelly Show, presented every day, Monday through Saturday, from 1 to 1.30, for our pleasure. That is Bob's and mine. Bill still, Bill has a wonderful time here. And so Only time. members of our staff are eligible. Nobody else need apply. Nobody uh, except uh, uh, our own staff members, our own families, our own advertising agencies and their employees. Right. They're the only ones that can enter. You, you people can't, can't apply. You folks can't uh, get in on this big thing. It's a little contest and prize that we're running just amongst ourselves. Now then. Howdy, Ray. Hello, Howdy, uh, Bob. Howdy, Bill. Hello there, Al. Howdy, Basil. Hello. Hello, Charlie. And it's mighty nice to be here, too, even though I did have to come back into this cold weather. Where have you been? Uh, Nome, Alaska. What's that? Nome, Alaska. You've been in Nome, Alaska? We were playing up there last night for two big shows. Yeah, I hope the... A they... gala midnight celebration. Was it heated? Oh, it was nice and warm up there. Oh. Warmer up there than it is down here, Ray. You'd be very happy to know, I'm sure. I bet the Weather Bureau would like to hear that. Uh, Ran into Santa Claus up there, too. Well, isn't that wonderful? And he He's say... getting a jump on Christmas Eve. He's moving out of the North Pole a little early this year. He is? Well, of course, he has a lot of toys to distribute. Well, he wants to get a good start. Good. And he'll get around, I hope, like he always he has. He told me he'd be around to all the little boys and girls. Isn't that wonderful, huh? That he'd be able to make the rounds all right. Sure. Well, that's good, kids. How are you about like? Do you like that? So he's coming, kids. So don't you worry. Boy, how be many here. more days before he comes? Today is the 16th. About, about uh, eight. 23, 4. That's eight, isn't it? Yeah, it's eight a Friday. Days, sure. Eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eight more days. Eight shopping days to Christmas, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I've got everything. I know when I'm going to do mine. I've, uh... Eight days from now. I, uh... You shouldn't do that, Bob. Now, no, I'm, one of, those, well, I'm one of those fellows that I get more fun... Christmas shopping in a heat wave in July. Uh-huh. I, I, I don't know. I get right into the spirit of Christmas, uh, always uh, summertime, and that's when I do a lot of my Christmas shopping. And the stores are uh, cool, cool, yeah, cool, and practically empty on a real in a real hot spell. And I get down there and, and shop to my heart's content. You're going to burn like my I have several green. hearts burn content left brown over. Spots, and if anyone listening in would like a used heart's content. Simply address a postcard to Heart's Content, this station. I have three or four nicely wrapped. Uh, heart's content that I'm willing to send out to you. Now, ladies, stand by for the new program, the serial show, Heart's Content. Beautiful. Where's our piano player? What are you paid for? To play the piano, Green? Go we'll on, call man. upon you. Heart's Content. Heart's content. Mm-hmm. Shall I introduce it again? Sure. Ladies, here is your new program, just for you, Heart's Content. Oh, no, Bill. Mm, that doesn't quite fit. It needs uh, to be oh, a little no. more sophisticated. 
No, Bill, a little more sturdily, you know. That's, uh, that doesn't fit the setting. Something that fits a romantic serial story. So... Sounds like a, a... Sounds like you're practicing with your left hand. Uh... That's it. Hmm, I like it. Ooh. Gee, that great. I plucked a rose and put it in my mouth and danced about the house. Remember, giving is the sincerest form of remembrance. That makes sense. Now it's Heart's Content, starring Marsha Van Allshot as Marge. Sherman L. Sturdley as Gregory. Right. We find Gregory and Marge in their small house in River's End. Okay, we have to change the script a little bit for this. Tell a piano player that the... theme is all right. Gentlemen, Bill Green and his piano. Gregory and Marge. They're talking about old times. Gregory, I... I remember those oh, old... Gregory. Oh, oh. Yes. Uh, I wish you'd take those old times out and burn them. Yes, they've piled up down there in the cellar. Oh, lands. Here's one from 1903. That, that was the year we were trotting the boards in Toledo. and I always will remember that. I remember that. Gregory. That cold December night when we stepped out on stage, smiled at the assembled throng. And, the, and I had a tooth missing. And our piano player vamped into our opening number. And then he, as I remember, he fell, didn't he? I believe, I yes. believe he did. And we never did get on that time. And then we moved on to even greater things. Remember hmm. Peoria? Oh, how kind of you to remember I'll never forget it. I was in my dressing room with a star on the door. A knock sounded, and it was me. Come in. I came in, and I said, hello. Hi. Then I went out again and went on stage for my great balancing act. I remember you were doing a tap dance in sneakers. I can just see me now, tap dancing there. I can too, David. Or Gregory. Or Eugene. <laughs> Call me, Linda. Yes, Eugene. Come down here and tell us about the time you were tap dancing in army shoes. I remember the time I tap danced in army shoes. Do I ever tell you about that? No. Tell us about it, Uncle. Wonderful time. My three brothers and I were uh, working out a routine. I see. A routine that we did from coast to coast for many a long moon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Our biggest success was in San Francisco. Was just where? before the fire. Uh-huh. Or was it the earthquake? Well, both. It was one of those things. Mm. I guess the earthquake came before the fire, as I remember. Yes. So we didn't get on that time either. Uh -huh. And we disbanded the act and never set foot in the theater again. Hey, we uh. did set foot in Grubbins Chinese, and we left two shoes there. Hey, two uh. left shoes we left there. Uh-huh. Hey, uh. Then we went overseas. Remember 1928? Yes, I was in the infantry. What were you in, Gregory? I was in eight months that time. Oh, yes, I remember. We toured all of the great capitals, played before the crowned heads, got crowned. <laughs> uh, we played all over Europe, and then hit out for the Orient. We were appearing in Baghdad, as I remember. I was... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. Uh, the time you and I were in Baghdad, Bob, we were in the French Foreign Legion. That's right, we were, and we just come off stage. We took a three-day leave and went to Baghdad. Right, what right. a wonderful time we had, right. huh? Dad was kind of mad, but we did it, though. <laughs> All stopped that night. Says, we did have a wonderful time. I remember, I remember so much about those good old days, Bob. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe the people listening want to hear about them. If, if you'd like to hear about it, we're going to publish a book called Dear Old Days. The Good Old Days. And, uh, I don't know, maybe we can put it on Unbreakable Final Light. We'll try to do that. Get it out to you by return mail. Well... Uh, what have we got here, Bob? This is song. Well, this is our latest song sensation, one that's big across the nation. Uh-huh. Uh, why don't we call in the Lumbago trio to sing it? Well, we will, but we'll just have to have two of them today. All right. Two of the Lumbago brothers, then, if they'd come in. Uh, 
Now, till next New Year's, at the oh, same time, this is my, uh, by... Uh, Guy Lombardo. Guy, Guy Lombardo, my royal, royal Canadian, wishing you a very happy New Year for Carbon. Thanks. Victor. Thanks a lot, everybody. Lieber. You've been great. Rosemary. Thanks. <laughs> and all the other members of our band. And now into our great song by our trio, which is only two people. You told a lie, I believed you. Can it be different? Look what you've done to my heart. You're doing the introduction. Excuse me, the phone just rang. You're doing the the harmony part with no no yes, air. Yes, Mr. Harmony. Well, there is an air about it, but... What? That was Bob. It was not. Yes. I was busy reading a newspaper. The, the Traveler. The Herald. Yes, sir. All righty. I'll do better. Let's try sure. it right, right from the top right. of the page. Look what you done, what you done, my baby. Look, Look what, what you done, done, what you done, my child. Look what you done, what you done, my baby. You done gone and told me a lie. You told a lie, I believed you. Look what you've done to my heart. You told a lie. I believed you. I was a fool from the start. I thought that you and I <laughs> together, together. I never dreamed that we would ever part. But you told a lie. I believed you. And look what you've done to my heart. I sing under the name Nelson Eddy sometimes. So look, friends, if, if you're planning a big outing for a group of elks, <laughs> it's a good season to bring the elks in out of the woods, uh, we'd be glad to go there and sing. Well, yeah, we'll sing to our heart's content. Sure. It's heart's content, ladies, the new program presented each day at this time. Incidentally, if you'd like uh, a heart's content, we have several. Simply send your request to us, and we'll send you by return mail one heart's content. But now my announcer. Now, let's listen to Arthur Godfrey. Oh. Chesterfield satisfied with the dead men. Chesterfield over and over again. Milder, much milder, all smokers agree. Always by Chesterfield's ABC. Oh, that's wonderful, Arthur. I didn't know Arthur was here. You, you I hope all you folks like the way I played my ukulele on that. You like the way he plays it? Wait a minute, who's this fellow? I'm the guy that sits in the background, you can't see me, but uh, I played a ukulele, the one Godfrey strum doesn't have no strings in it. Oh, you mean you're the one who actually makes the noise? I'm the guy. Yes, huh? My name is Lyle Gum Jr. Lyle Gum Jr., huh? I'm the ukuleleist, and uh, Arthur, he just, he just makes with he the He makes moment. like it. Well, I've noticed he holds that down under that table so you can't really well, see it. Well, he tried to use a player ukulele, but everyone can see the pedal's gone, you know? Sure. Well, oh, I don't uh, think there's much call for that instrument anyway. They hired me, and I stand a pack at a curtain. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, nobody gets to see me, but, you know, I can well, pay it off in the alley after the show. We're glad to give you credit where credit is due. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> thank you, ukulele. Would you like to play us a ukulele uh, solo right now? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't happen to bring it along, only I just wanted to come in here and straighten, uh, straighten you out on that. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot for doing that very same thing. Incidentally, I'm now handling Buster Crab in the East, the skate you want him for an Elks outing. Well, we, we've also booked ourselves out for things like that. Oh, so okay. it'd be competition, really. Well, I'm not really, I'm not East. I'm just kind of New England representative. I see. For yeah. Buster, huh? Sure. How's he doing? What's his last picture? Uh, rent tin tin, go home. Oh. I think. And I don't remember. I mean, they don't keep me up to date on that. I don't get variety very often. I saw a picture of his in 1935. I thought it would be his last, but he made several after that. (laughs) But now it's 1.14. Time for the other stations to join us. One moment, please. Let's listen. Wait a minute, Bill. Why don't we listen to Bill Green play one of his great piano uh, uh, selections? Bill, you know, is a marvelous piano player in his own right. As Mr. Wilson is an accomplished organ, Mr. Wilson again is is out ill, and we hope that uh, he'll be back with us uh, tomorrow. 
Or if not... Although if I he... doubt if he will, friends, because it's Saturday and he doesn't like to break up a long week. Well, if he doesn't want to come back up from New York to be here for tomorrow, I hope he certainly will be here Monday. And if you need more aspirins, Ken, you know where we are. Sure. Well, anyway... Getting back to Green, who we have with us today, is a very accomplished piano player. I was reading where someone thought he was one of the greatest piano players they had. Sonny Skyler. Oh, well, everybody who's, who's uh, played with, uh, with Bill here, that Bill They come away with. from Bill raving, friends. They do. So uh, why, don't we, why don't we put him to the test? What do, what do you play, Bill? Something nice. What? Well, he's, he's modest. He doesn't want to mention the title. All right, you play but something. The song won't sound like what it's supposed to. Well, I'll guess what it is. He wants you to meet Ralph Sigwald in a ten-round go in Kansas City, New Year's Eve. What do you right. think about I that? Think, yeah, I think he'll take him up on that. Isn't that wonderful? Boy, you're on the road to success. You've got a long ladder to climb, Bill. But you've got onto the first rung, and uh, a lot of luck to you. Now let's go over, uh, have a brief <laughs> reprise of each of our contestants oh, today. Oh, please. We have enough contestants all the time. I like to talk briefly, friends, about automobiles. First, we heard from young Arthur Godfrey, who sang with his ukulele, sang a song about something or other. Will you run over reprise, Arthur, of that? Being satisfied with the dead men, Chesterfield over and over again. Milder, much milder, all smokers set free. Always by Chesterfield's ABC. Then we had the man who really plays the ukulele. Thanks, folks. And then finally we had little Billy Green, the piano player, who played... <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs> now let's have... It's mighty grand uh, being here with you. Audience applause for uh, Billy Green. Hi. Hi. Come up. And then for the, uh, for the Lyle Gum Jr. He's nowhere. Ukulele player. He's nowhere, that guy. And finally for Arthur himself. Thunderous applause. <laughs> Now word for my Nancy. Thank you, friends. Say, here's an announcement from the Gila Motors. <coughs> that is, uh, Gila Motors, who are Oldsmobile Cadillac dealers. Or Gila Motors is a Cadillac Oldsmobile dealer. Let's put it that way. And uh, they're located at 43 North Beacon Street in Watertown Square. Now, Gila has a great cleanup going on. Places get out of hand out there. They're going to try and tidy up a little for Christmas. Oh, no, a great cleanup sale on 1949 Oldsmobiles. Now in progress. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's in big... Uh, huge oh, allowances. Yes, yes Mr. Healer. Hang up, Bob. Okay. Show them that we're independent. Should I hang up on Mr. Healer? No. Oh, no. I'll talk to Soft you. sofa, will you? Huge allowances. Soft soap, Mr. Healer? <laughs> big reductions and easy terms. Oh, well, it's pretty soft. Only... <laughs> tell them it's... Uh, it, we, we, ah? Tell them we left it in water overnight and it's real gooey. He left it in water overnight. Only $300 to $500 down. Now, are you in the market for a car and haven't bought one yet? Are you? Well, go out and look in the garage if you don't know. We'll wait. Though. We'll wait. You go out and look in the garage and find out if you've bought, uh, bought a car or purchased Find out car. if you've bought an Oldsmobile in the last six weeks. Yeah, will you go out, friends, please? Well, some of you may have and not have known it, see? Sure. Will you do that? Now, while you're doing that... While we do, we'll wait for them. We can do something else. And when they come back, just talk into your radio loudspeaker. We'll hear you. Yeah, well, real loud, so we'll all we'll hear all of you. 
Sure. You see, we have a reverse technique. You know, all microphones really are speakers anyway. Uh, you could use the microphone as a speaker. Of course, it wouldn't be much of a microphone after. But technically, it, it could be done. In other words, we can, we're sure, we can tune in on, on anybody who's listening to us. For instance, you don't know a, that, friends, do you? <laughs> a, a typical we comment. We hear a lot of those remarks you make, you A know. typical remark being made right now by a listener in Arlington. I was uh, modest. Who are those two guys, anyway? What do you think they are? Hmm? Well, try another one, will you? Will you? Try, uh, try Newton. Let's see if we can find somebody out there. I wonder who they are. Well, I, so far we haven't I hit told you not to turn on the radio. And maybe the sundown. I think the people are back now. They've discovered whether they have an automobile or not. All right. So you have it, huh? Well, okay. You're in the market for a car, then. And uh, you're lucky if you haven't bought one, because you can go and get it at Healer Motors. How about sand salt, Mr. Healer? What did he say? He didn't like that either. Oh. Be sure and investigate this offer. No salt, huh? It's sensational. This opportunity presents itself only once a year. So be wise and be thrifty. Buy a 1949 Oldsmobile at Healer Motors. H-E-A-L-E-R. Healer. Healer Motors, your Oldsmobile Cadillac dealer, 43 North Beacon Street, Watertown Square. Open evenings till 9, Saturday afternoon until 5. And healers have those cardboard Cadillac bodies in, so if you want to buy an old Oldsmobile and put a new shiny cardboard Cadillac body on it, you can at a very slight additional cost. It's a fine audience we've got. I gave them the snicker signal, and they didn't utter a sound. Oh, for goodness They're sake. They're supposed to snicker at that. Well, who can snicker when you hold up a snicker? People don't realize that when you hold up a snicker, they're supposed to snicker. Or something. Well, that's all beside the point. <laughs> and uh, getting back over here to where we'd like to broadcast the basketball game that's being uh, that's taking place now, friends, out there at the arena between the... Uh, the uh, Pulse Normal Squad and the uh, the Subnormal Teachers, the great rivals, and we'd like to take you out there now to our play-by-play announcer, Cleo Sturdley. Thanks, Ed. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. We're seated here in the broadcast booth. It's very comfortable. I'm your assistant. Anything I can My do? My assistant is seated here next to me. The, the guy in number four down there is tall, ain't he? They're both tall, those setters down there. His name is Crumlet. Which one? Uh, the tall one. Number five? Four. We'll refer to them by numbers from here to make it a little more convenient for you people. Listen. That's, that's a better idea. All right. Now, here we go. There, there, there. They're throwing the ball in the air. The tall fella hits it, and it goes way back to that little short... No, he hasn't got it anymore. He's dribbling. Number eight has it. Eight, eight has it, and you all know him. He's, he's dribbling, too. And, and now, we have a tall. now the other team has it. And he's dribbling. Oh, he's dribbling the wrong way. Incidentally, oh, with all this dribbling, will somebody around give me my over? Now they're going down toward the basket, which uh, is suspended overhead. It's a cute basket filled with goodies. Yes. Now they go. Oh, somebody else has got number 14 has it this time. Number five. Number, oh, number five has it. No, he, he passes it to number seven, I believe. And I'll word for my sponsor as they're getting this basket. Grubs, have you ever thought about eating? He got the basket, incidentally. If you ever think of eating, always ensure or make sure that you have food in the house. You like it, boy, for please, eating anyway. Please, there's a line failure west of Denver, and so I return you to my studio. Some food you can wash dishes with. I don't know, but you maybe. Hope it makes sense for you. Back here in Boston, we present a brief piano fill. And here he is, friends, brief piano fill. Come on over here, Phil, and say hello to everyone. Thank you, Louie McGee. <laughs> oh, stop, Phil. Gee whiz, I don't know, I... I, I sometimes... I'd like to just advertise my piano course, if you don't mind. Oh, what's that? I'm offering this course at the spectacularly low price of not $2, not $3, not $4. $7. $75. Oh, $75. Now, before you take the course, you may sound like this when you play the piano. Now, after you've had my piano book for one week, you sound like this. Then we clear up a few of the technicalities of the thing, and after two weeks, you sound like this. That's it. That's that. <laughs> after one year, you play the piano like this. See what 
first two weeks are the hardest. But they never learn a song, always up and down the scale. It's always piano breaks that you send for. Incidentally, friends, how about your breaks? Get uh, get your piano brakes on uh, on your automobile. Use new departure piano brakes. They're right. ready. When you pull up to a red light, just think, piano will play. Isn't that wonderful? So send for your piano brakes today. You'll like them. Address brakes, WHTH Boston. No fluid necessary with piano brakes. They'll last the lifetime of your car. All right? Now then, how about the commercials? We all through in the commercial department? Well, I don't have a schedule. I haven't had one since last Tuesday. Well, then I guess we probably... We are? We are all through. We've been assured I could have by the, that. We've been assured by a commercial department representative who ran in and frowned at us that, yes, that is all for the day. And uh, incidentally, I wish some of our salesmen would stop wearing those green visor caps. Don't you, Bob? Yes, it wonder why they. Look, I wonder why they wear them. It doesn't look very tidy. Well, it's... It looks all right, but I don't know. It, it, it just doesn't lend itself to the atmosphere. I, I think maybe if, if they wore uh, hats pulled down over their right eyes, it would be more appropriate. Why do they walk around with slide rules, too? I've noticed that lately. I think they're all taking math courses. They want to be technicians. <laughs> well, what do you use a slide rule for? Hmm? Slide? Don't you slide on them? No, I didn't know you could. Well, that's what they're for. At least that's what I always thought, too. I have a, my backyard filled with them. When we don't have snow, we put the sled on the slide roll. Oh, well. Wow. It's fun that well. way. And uh, we go like 60 sometimes. I wish we had more entertainment to offer this afternoon, friend. We have, fortunately. We have here this afternoon a gorgeous singer. I'd like to present Gwenear Sturdley. Good luck. Gwenear, how are you? Hi. <laughs> nice to have you up here. We have a few minutes to kill, and I'm sure you can do it. Well, I'm not prepared to sing, You're but not? I would like to read a poem. A poem? Would you like musical background? Please. I'll play a little something for you. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> no, no. Speak to him, will you please? What, what would you like? What kind of language do you use when you speak to him? Well, we have to write down his instructions. What, what kind you of... You tell me what kind, and I'll pass the word along. I'd be angry yet restrained. Angry yet restrained music, please. I don't, I, mean, he, I don't think he understands the word. What I mean, Bell. 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 Whoops. You're very mad at this fellow when you meet him and you say, Hi there, how are you? You see the feeling? Could you put that into music, please? We're going to use it in a minute. Hey. 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 See, that, that's wonderful. That reminds me of opera. And when I think of opera, I always think of you, Bob. Well, and thanks, Ray. I, your portrayal I did spend Figaro, a... Barber of Seville. I did that. Well, not only for him, but I, I was barber to quite a few people. You were? Tell yeah. me about him. Yes, yes, Fendi. Oh, no, not that barber. I mean the other type barbers. Hmm? I mean haircut type. Well, I, I uh, of course, Figaro was the, uh, was the biggest job I had. Can you hear Bill Green, everybody? <laughs> No, Joe moved his own microphone over there today, so Can nobody you? would miss a single note. Isn't that wonderful? Well, let's listen to him. See, just just like I figured. The minute you, you turn the, the spotlight on, he stops playing. Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, w when you see the cameras focused on you, smile, and then keep on playing, and we'll tell you when to stop. We hold up the sign over at this end of the studio, you see? See, we don't want the sign to come into focus on the camera. So, no, this is a down bomb. kind of tired of standing. Yeah, I am, too. All right. Hey, it's a long better. day. I'd rather sit down anyway, but, of course, for radio programs, you always have to stand up. I don't and know do why. do right about faces when you leave the mic. In the movies, they always stand up, I suppose, and that's why we do it. I guess so. I don't even know what's going to happen at 1.30. Of course, I know the news will happen, but uh, for that, I don't have any idea. Why don't we just leave everything up to them from here on out, huh? Okay. Tell them everybody what it is, will you, Bob? What I have to run the train. What Boy, is they're it? heavy to catch. Up what is it? Huh? What is it? It's a, uh, it's public, been, uh, service program. a public service program. Bob and Ray. Bob and Ray, it's Bill called. Green Bill Green played the piano. Yeah, Ken, uh, Ken Green wasn't Wilson. Ben Wilson. Ben Wilson wasn't here today. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow, yeah. same time, 1 o'clock. Uh-huh. Bad name of Bob Ray from WHDH in Boston, which is in Boston.
Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere. And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan. And I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me. And you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.